Last month, when we saw for the first time in nearly a year in the Canadian real estate market, home prices increasing, a lot of people said, oh, it won't last. It's just one month. Well, not only have home prices increased a second month in a row, they've increased by more than they did last month. I can't wait to see the comment section in this video. Hey there, and welcome back to another monthly Canadian real estate market update here on Ball of Prairie Real Estate. My name is Matthew Faye from Real Estate Agent in Regina, and that is my trusted assistant, Matilda. As I said in the intro, we are seeing pretty much across the board in many Canadian cities, sales volumes starting to pick back up and home prices are starting to increase as well. What we are not seeing though, is sellers coming back to the market because inventory levels are really low across Canada right now. And I've seen it in the comment section, people saying, oh, it's just a seasonal bump or it's a dead cat bounce. The best one yet, it's FOMO, really? We're still talking about FOMO in the Canadian real estate market after everything that's happened this past year. You're saying you need to wait, don't buy a house now, because of course home prices are going to continue to decline. To which I propose a question, what if they don't? But what if instead this is in fact just a continuation of a problem that has been in the Canadian real estate market and something I've been talking about for years on this channel, and that is we have a lack of homes in Canada, whether it's for people wanting to rent or people wanting to buy. There simply isn't enough physical dwellings for the demand for housing in Canada right now. And that problem is being compounded by huge population increases being pushed by the Canadian federal government right now. And that is why we're seeing upper pressure on rental markets and now starting to see it back in the resale market. Now, if you are thinking about buying a house and you want me to set you up with the best real estate agent in your market, in the description right below this video, is a link to my calendar where you can book me in for an appointment. I'm gonna give you a call, figure out what's important to you, both in a house and a real estate agent, and get you set up with the best agent in your market. But as we always do, let's start this off with another terrible bad dad joke. Why did the chicken go to the gym? To work on this pecs. If you have a terrible joke that I can use in a future episode, put it in the comments below. In Victoria, the 590 homes that were sold last month is down 9% from the five year average of 650. There were 1,100 homes that were newly listed for sale. That's down 10% from the five year average. Typically about 1,200 homes would be put up for sale in the month. And there's just under 2,000 homes for sale, which is down 2% from the five year average. Usually around 1,930 homes would be currently for sale this time of year in Victoria. So that puts months of inventory at 3.3, meaning Victoria continues to actually numerically shift back towards a seller's market. The composite bench bump price in Victoria continues to drop. It's about $850,000 right now. That's down 2% year over year. It's also down 15% from the peak we saw in June of 2022, where it was just shy of $1 million at $995,000. In the press release from the Victoria real estate market, they mentioned how since sales have essentially doubled from January, that is a sign of strength for the Victoria real estate market. Yes and no. Typically, sales will jump and they will double from January through to March. So that's basically what we'd expect to see. So I don't think I'd really call that a strength yet, but what I would say is that the Victoria real estate market getting back to normal is probably a good thing compared to what it's been for the last six to eight months. But Victoria seems to be one of the real estate markets in Canada that is kind of lagging the trend that we've seen across Canada with home prices increasing. The Vancouver real estate market saw 2,500 homes sold last month. That is down 24% from the five year average. Usually about 3,400 homes are sold in a month. But the 4,300 homes newly listed for sale is down 25% from that five year average where typically about 5,700 homes would be put up for sale in the month. And the 8,600 homes currently for sale in Vancouver is down 14% from that five year average. Typically this time of year, you're gonna see over 10,000 homes for sale. That means months of inventory got pushed back down to 3.4, meaning it's trending towards a seller's market in Vancouver. When it comes to home prices in Vancouver, the benchmark price is $1.14 million, down about 10% from a year ago, and down 10% from the peak of 1.26 million, which was April of last year. When it comes to what's hot and what's not, it shouldn't be surprising. I've been talking about this for a while now. The more affordable price points in Vancouver and the more affordable price properties like townhouses are starting to see a lot more activity. And condos is the one that's really started to pick up a little bit, partially due to the change in the BC legislation that now says all condos are rentable. 
So that means investors are starting to look at these condos that weren't available as investment properties as investment properties and they're starting to see a lot more competition for them now. The over 2,400 homes that sold in Calgary last month puts it on par with the sales numbers for Vancouver, which of course is a much bigger city than Calgary. That means Calgary saw sales up 12% over that five year average, usually a little under 2,200 homes would sell in the month. And the 3,300 homes that were put up for sale in the month is down 12% versus that five year average, usually about 3,700 homes are put up for sale in the month. While there's a little over 3,200 homes currently for sale, that is down a staggering 46% versus the five year average. Typically there's 5,300 homes for sale right now in Calgary, meaning months of inventory is at 1.3. That's a very strong seller's market for Calgary. When it comes to home prices, the Calgary benchmark price is $541,000. That's up 5% year over year. It is down 1% from the peak we saw in May of last year, which was $546,000. So it shouldn't be surprising we're talking with real estate agents. They're telling me it's basically a seller's market across the board. Essentially every category is about one month's worth of inventory, especially the sub $500,000 price point. That's where the most competitive, most multiple offer situations they're seeing are. One agent was telling me how they had 51 offers on a listing and it sold $100,000 over asking. I mean, that's crazy. That's what you talk about in Toronto, not the Calgary real estate market. In Edmonton, almost 1,850 homes were sold last month that is down three percent from their five year average usually it's about 1900 homes that would sell in the month but the over 3300 homes newly listed for sale is down six percent from the five year average usually about 3500 homes will get listed for sale in the month and there's 6300 homes currently for sale in edmonton that means it's down 14 percent from the five year average usually about 7400 homes would be for sale this time of year so months of inventory pushed down to 3.5 meaning Edmonton continues to trend towards a seller's market. When it comes to home prices in Edmonton, that composite metro price is about $380,000. That is down 6% year over year. It's down 8% from the peak we saw in June of 2022, which was just about $410,000. For local agent insight, Edmonton real estate agents are telling me homes price between $300,000 and $600,000 are seeing the most activity, so multiple offers. The south, southwest, and central areas of Edmonton are where the neighborhoods are seeing the most activity. And so unsurprisingly, if the downtown market's doing well, that's why we're seeing an uptick in the condo market in Edmonton. In Regina, the 394 homes sold in the month makes it the third busiest March all time. Third only to last year and the year before, it's up 13% versus the five average, about 260 homes sell in the month. While the 446 homes newly listed for sale is down 19% from that five year average of 550. And the 805 homes that were for sale to start the month is the first time we've seen over 800 homes for sale this year in Regina. That is still down 31% versus the five year average. Normally we're closing on 1200 listings this time of year. The strong month of sales, the low inventory means months of inventory pushed down to 2.7, making Regina a seller's market. When it comes to home prices, the benchmark price is $307,000, down 4% year over year. It's down about 7%, from the peak we saw in June of 2022, which was $326,000. Now that benchmark price is actually down two months in a row, which is a little bit perplexing because that's really not reflective of what we're seeing in the market right now. I bet though next month you're gonna see that flip and we're gonna start seeing price increases in that benchmark price in Regina. Again, we finally crossed 800 homes for sale, but that's well below where we should be. So there's a lot of competition amongst buyers right now for homes that are for sale. And that is particular in that 300 to $500,000 price point. We're seeing multiple offers on a lot of what's being sold to that. Pretty much every buyer I've had in that price point has seen multiple offers and the listings I've had pretty much all received multiple offers as well. Saskatoon saw almost 400 homes sold in a month. That is up 9% from their five year average where about 360 homes typically sell in a month. While there were less than 600 homes newly listed for sale, putting it down 20% from their five year average, usually over 700 homes would be newly listed for sale in the month. And with just over 900 homes for sale right now in Saskatoon, that puts active inventory down almost 50% from the five year average. Typically there's gonna be 1,450 homes for sale this time of year in Saskatoon. So of course the strong month of sales, low inventory, push months of inventory down to 2.3 in Saskatoon. When it comes to home prices in Saskatoon, that composite benchmark price is $376,000, up 2% year over year. It is down about 2% from the peak we saw in August of last year, where prices peaked at about $383,000. The main potatoes of the Saskatoon real estate market really is that $200,000 to $400,000 price point last month. And as it is most months, they see about 50% of the sales in just that $200,000 window. So it should come as no surprise at all that that's where the most competition from buyers is. When it comes to hot neighborhoods here, we've got Brighton, Evergreen, Hampton Village, Lakeview, Stonebridge, Wildwood, Willow Grove, and Rosewood. In other words, 
the east side of Saskatoon, that's where the majority of those neighborhoods are, and that's where we're seeing the most competition right now. In Winnipeg, the thousand homes that were sold last month is down 22% from their five year average, usually closer to 1,300 homes would be sold in a month. And the 2,000 homes newly listed for sale is down 13% from that five year average of 2,300. And right now there's about 3,400 homes currently for sale in Winnipeg. That is up 5% from that five year average of about 3,200, meaning months of inventory is 5.1, basically right in the middle of a balanced market in Winnipeg. When it comes to home prices, that composite benchmark price, $335,000 down 9% from last year. It's down 10% from the peak we saw last year, which was May, and that was $370,000. It's really interesting when I'm talking with agents in Winnipeg because they're saying, at least numbers wise, this year has started out almost identical to 2019. And back then they were saying, hey, it's a pretty good year. Boy, how a couple of crazy years can sure change perspective. But we are starting to see sales rebound slowly, but with more inventory, buyers have more choice. And that's why we're not seeing much upward pressure on prices in Winnipeg right now. Hey, you watching this video right now, you already love learning about Canadian real estate. So why not subscribe to the Bold Prairie Real Estate YouTube channel and join this awesome community have. Now let's talk about the Toronto real estate market because it's getting pretty interesting there. The 6,900 homes sold last month is down 29% from that five year average. We're closer to 9,800 homes would typically sell in the month, but the almost 11,200 homes newly listed for sale in the month is down 35% from the five year average. Typically over 17,000 homes would be put up for sale in the month. And the number of homes for sale right now in Toronto is just over 10,000. That is down 17% from the 12,000 we typically see this time of year. So that pushes months of inventory down to 2.1. If you're wondering why we're starting to see multiple offers back in Toronto, that's why. When it comes to home prices in Toronto, that composite benchmark price is about $1.12 million, down 16% year over year. It's down 18% from the $1.33 million peak we saw in May of 2022, but it's two months in a row. We've seen home prices increase in Toronto. Last month, they said one month doesn't make a trend, but a viewer said one month can start a trend. And yes, I agree with that. But really in my mind, this trend started 10 months ago. Through April, May, and June, we saw huge price decreases in Toronto. There's been about a 22% drop, peak to trough in prices in Toronto. 17% of that happened that April, May, June, and a little bit into July. And we saw us basically since July, the pace of price declines start slowing down each and every single month to the point where we got now where we are, which is two months in a row of price increases. And this past month saw a price increase that was double the previous month. So until we see something to change the direction of this trend, don't be surprised to see more price increases in Toronto. Now, as part of these videos, I do a ton of research on it. I've seen all the different videos and I've seen the fancy charts and all the fancy economic jargon. At the end of the day, the most fundamental important thing to the Canadian real estate market is supply and demand. And we don't have a ton of supply and we have a fairly strong amount of demand in comparison. But why haven't sellers come back to the market? I think that's a really important question to look at. And I think there's two reasons for this. First off is that sellers aren't willingly going to take losses on their homes. If they're planning on selling and they're saying, I'm not gonna be able to get what I used to be able to get for, I'm gonna take a loss on it. They're not gonna put it on the market unless they have to. And then when it comes to move up buyers, so somebody that already has a house, that's looking for a larger house, they may not be able to make that move or financially might not make sense to make that move. Now, most home buyers think of payments, not total purchase price. And so if, for example, and I'm just gonna make up numbers, your payment's gonna go up $1,500 a month to make a move and it doesn't get you much bigger or better of a house, most sellers are probably just not gonna make that move. So what it creates is a log jam. Sellers that won't move up into bigger houses, freeing up homes for first time home buyers, and we've seen first-time home buyers really struggling to get in the market because there isn't a lot of choice for them right now. Now, both the Toronto Municipal Government and the Ontario Provincial Government have put plans in place to try to address the chronic shortage of homes in Toronto. But obviously, it's going to take a significant amount of time before those plans actually start to see more homes available for people to buy. In the meantime, Toronto continues to be one of the top destinations for people who are looking to move to Canada, which is gonna put pressure on both the rental and the resale purchase market in Toronto. In Ottawa, they had almost 1,200 homes sold a month, but that is down 34% from their five year average of 1,800. And the 2,100 homes newly listed for sale, that is down 14% from their five year average of 2,400. While the approximately 2,700 homes currently for sale in Ottawa is a huge increase from what we've seen over the last couple of years, 
it is up 10% from that five-year average. We're typically about 2,400 homes to be for sale this time of year. So when it comes to home prices in Ottawa, that composite benchmark price is about $620,000, down 15% year over year, and down 16% from the peak we saw almost exactly a year ago at $730,000. The Ottawa real estate market is kind of a funny one that doesn't quite make sense to me right now. And I guess being government town, it's kind of normal to be a little bit different than the rest of Canada and the rest of Ontario. We're seeing the sales gap getting worse versus the five-year average and inventory is getting better. That is for buyers, more choices available. So it's a little unusual to see home prices increasing in Ottawa. Now, when I'm talking with agents there, they're specifically saying that single family market from 650 to $750,000 that's where we're seeing the most competition. They are seeing some multiple offers in that segment as well. On either side of that or different product categories, that's not nearly as busy or as active. In Montreal, they had just shy of 4,000 homes sold in a month, but that is down 28% from the five-year average. Normally, you're gonna see closer to about 5,800 homes sold in a month. While the 6,500 homes newly listed for sale is down 10% from the five-year average, typically about 7,200 homes would be put up for sale. And active inventory, 16,500, that is down 1% from the five-year average, usually about 16,800 homes would be for sale this time of year. And that leaves months of inventory at 5.5 in Montreal. When it comes to home prices in Montreal, that composite benchmark price is just under $510,000, down 7% year over year. It's down 9% from the peak of $555,000 we saw in May of 2022. I've been talking about it for a couple of months now, and that is the market is starting to pick back up in Montreal. Agents are telling me they're getting more phone calls, more people going to open houses, and that's what we're seeing reflected in those sales numbers. Yes, it's below the five-year average, but the gap versus the five-year average continues to get smaller each and every single month. It is nice to see more inventory, so buyers have more choices to select when they are out looking. That's good to see. We are seeing prices increasing in Montreal. That's been kind of across Canada, and Montreal is no different. And that is, of course, as buyers are starting to feel more confidence in the market, that is putting more upward pressure on prices. When you see a good house, it's selling quicker now, potentially selling in multiple offers. A few months ago, you could drive some really good deals, get discounts off of asking price. Now sellers are kind of holding the line. They're not discounting prices very much. And like I said, those good houses, they're selling quick in Montreal right now. The Halifax market continues to be one of the busier ones in Canada. Now, I don't have a full five-year history for Halifax quite yet. So these are versus last year. Of course, these numbers are going to look a little silly compared to last year's numbers. 326 homes sold, that's down 41%. The 519 homes put up for sale, that is down 26%. And the 682 homes currently for sale, that is up 116% versus last year. But remember, it was only a couple of years ago to see 15 or 1600 homes for sale was completely normal. Months of inventory in Halifax, 1.7. The average price in Halifax, because they don't have benchmark there, is $557,000, up 14% from last year. It's down 3% from the peak we saw in May of last year at $574,000. As I said in the intro, Halifax is a very busy and active market. Nearly 50% of all the homes sold in Halifax are selling over asking price right now. But agents are telling me the $300,000 to $700,000 price point, that is where it is the most active and the most multiple offers, most competition amongst buyers. That's where that is happening. When it comes to the higher end, so above $700,000, that's also where the new construction typically starts, $700,000 and above. That's a little bit softer, so there's more deals to be had there. And again, I get it, $700,000 doesn't really sound like much of a deal. And again, it is still Halifax, one of the busiest, most competitive markets in Canada. So everything is relative here. But overall, the Halifax market is a very busy one. That's a wrap on this month's Canadian real estate market update. But if you want an update on what's going on in the Canadian real estate news, right here is my most recent weekly news recap video. As always, guys, thanks very much for watching.